choose any of the pens that you had practiced with before. I used this one. So here I am going to start using the ruler instead of just hand freehanding the long orthogonal lines. Do the best that you can with making sure that your lines and your pen mark are the same spot. So look at the spot right before you start drawing if your pen actually is hitting the pencil line that you had drawn priorly. So it's kind of like the curve of a blade when you're using it. Um, you want to make sure that they're aligned. When you are using your ruler, make sure that you're on the actual line and going to your vanishing point if you still have that attached. I do not. Now I'm going to fast forward and I'm just going to draw the main lines that are on the piece that are all long, which are those. Now we're going to start with the top and we're going to move our way down. The arches themselves, you are going to just trace the inner arch, not the exterior arch part, which is the brickwork. You're going to shade the dark part of the actual um, archways. I'm going to fast forward when everything throughout the video becomes redundant. Now we're going to work on shading. When you're looking at your photograph, you'll notice that the image on the left hand side with inside the arch is a lot darker because light's not hitting in there. Also when you're shading, don't shade at the same angle as your vanishing point. You're going to be shading horizontal similar to this plane right here since it's on the interior facing wall because it's in shadow. So create a horizontal line going back and forth, which you're going to be doing with your pen going in that little space only. When you're going in here, try to fill in the little baby gaps as you're working. Right here, it's a little bit lighter than it is on the interior space. So we're going to start at the top and slowly come down, similar to a gradient, but moving the gradient from the left to the right. So in this area, it's going to be a little bit darker. I'm making sure my pen is still horizontal the entire time. So as I'm working, I'm working towards a little gradient that's in there. When you're looking at your piece, just kind of look at any spots that you need to fill in as you're working. So right here I had a little bit of white little gaps and so I'm just cleaning that up. I'm adding some um, lines that are a little bit vertical appearance. However, they're actually the shape of the curvature of the actual arch. You do not have to put these lines in there if you do not want. I just like to try to make that area in the back corner on the left a little bit darker. And having cross hatching works a little nicer to make it even darker. But that's not necessary. You can just keep on going with your orthogonal um, or horizontal lines I meant for hatching. You're going to continue this process throughout all of these, making sure that you have a gradient that's going from left to right, so darkest is on the left and to the right. Around this little area right here and to the right, um, towards the vanishing point, you can't really see the gradient that's in this one. So between here, those are all going to have gradients. The ones to the right of the other one is going to be, all be just dark, so you can just shade those in. So here, making sure that I, my lines are horizontal, not orthogonal, I'm going to start shading this space. Here, horizontal, making sure I'm looking at the values, so I'm going through all of them and just getting a base coat within them. Then I'm going to go back through and start making that gradient that needed, so the left hand side of each one of them is going to be a little bit darker. Once you have finalized that, the next thing we need to do is we need to shade this little space that's right here. So what is happening is that little chunk is actually sitting out and we're going to be shading the underside of it. So this needs to also be shaded at a horizontal plane. So those lines, make sure you're using them horizontally and they're going to be really, really small. So going from the, uh, a very tight little location towards the end, it almost starts appearing that you're doing like little dots. This is fast forward. So take your time and pause this video whenever you need. 
pen you cannot erase, so you need to make sure you're taking your time. This little line that's right here, it's right underneath, there's another line. That little line very close to us has a little bit of thickness, so there's like a cast shadow almost being projected upon it. So make sure it's a broken space, it's not a, an entirely a thick line. So as you see, I have a little gap in between those two little spots that are allowing it to have more of a realistic appearance because this is a weathered building, so not everything is still sticking out the same or equal spacing. There's a little bit of a shadow coming down vertically. If you'd like to place that in, you could using a vertical line, meaning up and down. You do not have to. However, you don't see it all the way around. The little archways around the big archways, which are those little brick sections, we are going to work on now. However, you only see a small portion. So you're only going to be shading with pen in a small portion. So as you see, I just drew the little top part. I am now moving on to the next one. I do not see anything visible, like very visible, with the pen, uh, like what I would like to do with a pen. So here I'm only placing small little sections of darker pen work where my pencil goes all the way around. We're just going to erase that later. So just make sure that you don't do a whole like little U shape, upside down U shape all the way around each one of them. It's not going to look realistic because you cannot see it entirely and so only look at where it's a little bit darker in those points. Now we're going to move down to the bottom section. Right here there are three lines. The top line is the highlight. The next line in the section is going to be that shadow. So we are going to be doing a horizontal line again and not shading this area. You're only going to be shading left to right in this little itty bitty space that is here. You should have a white line, therefore, to the right of it, which is going to be the side panel of that space. We're on the underside where um, this little lip is sticking out. As you move down again, it's going to get very small and tight, as if you're only making dots. All right, now we're going to do the exterior curvatures of the bricks on the outside of the arches, similar to what we did above you're only going to be seeing small little sections. So here I made a line and I'm looking at where am I seeing darker points with inside the image. Not black, but darker. So here I made a little jump. If you notice, this is not entirely tracing a pencil line. I have an implied line that I am using. Placing a line in specific spots, I don't see anything there but I do see a small little spot right here next to this little brick. So I'm gonna add that. Over here I don't really see too much, but I'm going to make a small little line that is right towards the top where I see, and a little dash towards the bottom. As you move further away from the viewer, closer to the vanishing point, you're going to see less. So I'm right here now, in that little archway, I'm only going to be placing a small amount towards the top and towards the right hand side. A little dash on there. Now I'm going to move over to the next one and I'm going to be placing a small little dash towards the top again on the left hand side top and then a little dash on the right hand side. I'm going to continue moving down but these are going to get smaller and not as noticeable. Now we're going to start working on the interior space of the archway, so the underside, which is in the, sh in the shadows. This is where your piece starts to really show up. So trace your pencil line entirely for this one. Just watch what you're doing and where you're tracing because you don't want to go into sections that should not have a traced line. So here, as you can see, I'm making sure that I trace the area that I for sure know is going to have an exterior space. Now when we get to this little bump right here, as you see, I'm jumping around it. I'm not going in between it. So I know that I have these little gaps that I am not um, tracing with inside. So just make sure you're knowing where you're tracing. So you're tracing your pencil lines as you're going. Right here, that pencil line or that pen line doesn't go all the way into the sky. So just make sure you're aware of that. Draw some of those bricks that you have drawn. So I have pencil drawn bricks here. I'm making thicker pen marks, so it's not a single pen. So if you notice, I go back and forth just slightly. 
to make it slightly darker. Because we are going to be shading, we're going to end up needing the pen lines that we want to be visible to be darker. Now I'm looking at the curvature of that archway, making sure that my pen line is mimicking the pencil I have underneath and mimicking the curvature of that actual archway. It is a broken implied line again that I am doing. This is going to help with shading later and there's also those lines that are in the photograph. So if you notice, I'm mimicking those lines. There are some darker lines that are going horizontally in this space as well, which is the brickwork that's underneath. Now we're going to start shading this piece. Using a horizontal plane, you're going to do hatching initially. Hatching is always your first start. That's going to be where you're going to start with a lighter value coming down. So as you notice, I'm going from the one side going to the other, but then the other side I start going back in towards it. So it, I like to go from um, one direction, so starting at a line, so one of my trace lines, and I go inward. Then because I go inward, I have it so that it's a broken line, meaning that they don't all end at the same spot. Then I'll go from the right hand side and move inward towards the other lines that I have. And this is a way to make it so that you don't have to go left to right perfectly from the exterior lines. Here I'm just going in, I'm looking at where shadows are actually with inside the actual image. And now I'm going to be placing the lines going across on the piece because this is in shadow as well. The very first section I did was because of the darker shadow. So here you can see there's darker shadow here and it's lighter and then a little bit darker on the side. Now we're going to start going in and making sure we're defining those values because it is part of the structure. It is going to show a little bit more information than just having it a solid shape. making sure you're looking at basic shapes of it. I'm going through and I'm just doing the hatching still. My lines are only horizontal. I haven't done any vertical lines. Those were horizontal as well. I'm going to look at there's little spots that are all over. So now I'm going to be placing those spots in. All I'm doing is kind of like scribbling a little baby hole. So I'm not hatching the holes or anything. I'm just kind of doing little circles to fill those in. Filling in some of the white spots that I have. And now I'm going to start doing um, the angled lines that are going up. So I'm hatching my cross hatch. My cross hatching, if you don't feel comfortable doing it, you can stop at this point and just make it a little bit darker towards the top. When you're cross hatching, whatever the cross plane is, it needs to follow along with the curvature of your piece. So here you can see I am following along with the curvature that I'm doing. So the, the arch's angle I'm following. Remember those lines that I had there before. I can still see them and they're helping me determine what angle I need to be at and making sure I'm in between them and making sure that this is the same angle entirely the entire time. So it has that nice curvature. Also notice is that my mark making that I'm doing is not very long. I am doing smaller strokes that are under an inch long um, and I'm not measuring, it's just what my hand feels nice at. If you do long strokes, it starts to look weird. Um, so try to make it so they're short, small strokes, which is going to end up um, being a little bit quicker as well. Here I'm doing a little bit longer strokes because I'm trying to get across the entire plane and make it nice and even. Going a little bit darker. All right, so now we're gonna work on this little space that's here. This little space, all I'm gonna do is horizontal lines that are going within it. However, we need to make sure that we're gonna be able to tell difference between this space and the other. I just got a little spit up my pen itself spit up. So if you take the paper and just kind of roll your pen on it, it'll help. So 
I am going to do horizontal lines going across that space. But if you notice, it starts blending in with the area above. So there is going to be something that is making it look different. We notice that right here, there are some shadows. So there's darker spaces. So I'm going to start placing in those details within the little chunk that is popping out, that brickwork that's there. It will help make it stand out of the space behind it or the space it's attached to. There's a shadow right here. You need to make sure that you get that because that's going to help. There's one below as well. So I'm just kind of shading that in really tight back and forth actually with my pen in that space, making it black. Then if you notice if it's too dark surrounding and it doesn't match the area around it, you just got to blend it in. Here you notice there's some details and I'm going to go back in so I only have the lines of where they are. But now I need to shade those areas. Then now I'm going to work on the section below. It's mimicking very similar to the one above. However, I'm going to use only horizontal lines here. Making this darker right underneath to make it pop out, similar to what we just did in the one above. If you want to do cross hatching in this area, because it's not a curved section, it's a vertical plane, you'd have vertical lines in this area and horizontal for the other part. So as you see, I'm doing vertical lines. You do not have to have cross hatching in this area. You could only do hatching if that's more comfortable for you and do the horizontal lines. I like the look of cross hatching and I feel like it's a good practice. So I'm using hatching in a vertical form to make sure that it's making sense with the plane of the object. So because that little section is going up and down, your lines for your cross hatch is also going to go up and down. I tend to use my cross hatching for details or to make areas darker. I tend to use my hatching for the base. Now this area right here, so we were just discussing the angle. It's at an angle like this. It's not vertical. It's not it technically is horizontal as well. So either you can shade it this direction or you can shade it horizontally. At this time, my pen just spit up again. So my area is a little darker than I wanted it to be, but I'm gonna work through it. Just make sure it makes sense. So I'm gonna make this little area right here a little bit darker so that it makes sense with my piece. Yours should be a little bit lighter. Take a look at the photograph or take a look at the image on your computer, either or, to make it work. Here, see, I'm going to get rid of my spit up. Now, we're going to continue doing that throughout all of those. However, I'm going to show you this little area here first, and then I'm going to be able to fast forward through the entire top section of this video. We're going to start working on those bricks. The bricks themselves, remember you had done them in pencil. So all you're doing is tracing those small sections in pen itself. You can use a ruler for this. I have a hard time seeing my pencil lines with the ruler and I feel like it's so much faster using pen. However, if you feel more comfortable with a ruler, then for sure do that. Making sure that these lines, double check, are going to your vanishing point. So now I'm doing the brickwork that's going surrounding the archway, that curved brickwork. So look at the angles of that brick and see which ones you see. I don't see very many, so as you notice, I'm kind of breaking it up a little bit and only plopping in a few that I see that's more noticeable, making sure I look at the angle and what direction it's going. Now I'm doing the brickwork towards the bottom. As you see, all the bricks are now completed on there. Now I'm going to be continuing through all of these archways, similar to what I just did um, with the first one. So I didn't do anything different. I will discuss here shortly on here, orthogonal lines. Um, you just need to make sure that you're doing with your bricks. Your underside always make sure that they're horizontal lines. So as you see, all of these are horizontal lines that I'm doing. Right now, I just did a horizontal line shading, all one value. 
Now I'm going from the top and I'm coming down at a gradient. So here I'm going to stop about three fourths the way. This right here is all you have to do for all of your arches if you prefer. But to add a little bit more, because your photograph will show you that there's darker and lighter spaces, cross hatching will help you get a little bit more detail and a little bit darker. So here is cross hatching. Now I'm hatching back back again. So you'll notice that I never stop at one. Now I'm going to do the details within it. So look at your photograph down in this corner over here. It's a little bit darker on the edge. And I'm hatching for this one, so I'm doing vertical, but I'm following the curvature of the archway as I'm going up. So remember the same thing we did in the last one. Now I'm going to move down towards that little section that we were talking about that sticks out. We need to make sure it sticks out. So I have a shadow above and now I'm working on the shadow below. Now I'm going to shade horizontally the entire plane on the entire piece that's below, adding shadows when needed using a vertical line in this section or using still your horizontal lines for your hatching. Horizontal lines here, making sure that you are aware that you're not following the orthogonal down there. Throw in some brick work so your pencil lines, you can still see them. So throw those in and then you have a little bump that's on the outside. These little boxes that are right here, I'm gonna slow down for a second to show you. So I'm going to do the shadows. There's shadow lines that are coming down from them. So if you notice, there's a cast shadow that's being projected onto the surface of the structure. So I am drawing vertical lines, a vertical hatching that is making it so that they are going to appear to be three dimensional. If you do not have the shadows and you only have boxes sticking out, it's not going to look like a 3D form because it's missing its light source. Here I'm going to shade the side of the box. I'm tracing the box out first, and then I'm shading the sides of them. The sides, be aware of what is dark. So there's the face of it. There's that little square shape that is going to be in the sun. The rest of it is in shadow. So here you can see I am tracing the box, shading that in, and then I'm going to leave the area um, lit on the one side and not shaded. Continue doing this until your little boxes are complete. As you move over to these over here, you're going to notice you can still see the boxes just slightly. However, they're not as detailed. The ones that are further to the right are going to be even just shapes. So they're going to be a lot easier, just making sure that you're looking at the shape and the scale or the size of it as you're working. So trace first. Little boxes. See, I'm just making those little shapes. Now you're just doing your horizontal lines for hatching and then you're doing a gradient from above. So it's darker towards the top. As it comes down, it gets lighter. Now I'm doing shading throughout the top and the section or the middle section there I meant and I just kept it all the same throughout the entire space. Now I'm defining that little space up on top because that's where all the light and the bouncing of the um, light is hitting as well as like whatever those stains are with on the brickwork. Then I'm making sure that this little piece pops out and looking at the shading with inside the photograph. As you go further away from the subject matter towards the tree line and towards the vanishing point, there's going to be less detail. Tracing, shading, all one value initially, now gradient towards the top. So right one value I just did. 
for finding my shapes and now I'm doing my gradient. Continue this process until you are done with the archways. Make sure you're observing the photograph because you ha don't memorize things very well. You start losing actual memory of what things look like. So always be observant of what you are drawing. So remember there's some trees on the right hand side. So if you, as you notice, there's a white shape, a little triangle shape that's there. I'm going in and finishing up those brick lines now that are throughout the piece. As you notice throughout going back towards the, the trees and towards the vanishing point, there's going to be less of them, less noticeable. I am just double checking all my little spaces, adding those little boxes within that area. Don't forget the bricks that are up on the top. You should have pencil lines that are there. See, you could use a ruler. However, I just had a spit up job on my brickwork, but that's okay. I'm going to make it work. Right there. Now we're going to work on the bottom section. The bottom section is extremely similar to the top section. We're going to work on this left hand side. The left hand side tends to be the most detailed area because it is closer to us. So it's going to take you the longest. As you move away from us, it's going to take you less time. You could probably do all the archways within almost the same amount of time as it's going to take you to do this one. All I'm doing is tracing right now. Start shading. Bigger areas are harder to shade with pen. So as you notice, I'm going from the right hand side going inward, making it broken. Then I'm going to go left and come in and fill in those gaps. Then I'm going to move to the right and go from the right hand side line that I had drawn and make sure it's a broken line, meaning some of the lines are longer and some are shorter. Then I'm going to continue filling in this space just like that. When you notice here, I'm just going to continue doing the right hand side and then I'll move over to the left hand side. That's another option as well. Now you just filled in the space with a base. Now we have to start doing the detail shading. Inside here, it's kind of hard to see with inside the video. But when you look at your photograph or when you look at the screen, you'll notice there's these darker shapes that are with inside this area. Also notice my curvature is very similar to the one that's to the right of it. So I'm making sure that the curvature is making sense for the curve that's here. Mimicking the curve that's on the outside. However, as it goes inward, it's going to slightly adjust. To the right of those lines that I had just created, there's a shadow with inside the photograph. So I'm going to be creating that. I'm starting with my darker points so I can know where they're located. And then I'll go over the top of them all, the entire piece, to make it darker in just a short bit. Making sure I'm looking at where are my darkest points with inside my image and details. Shading those in first, using only horizontal lines currently. So all hatching. Now look at the curvature of the angle of this structure. On the edges, you'll notice it's a lot darker. So we need to make this whole piece darker. However, because of the other lines that we already have below, we're going to make those even darker yet, which is our whole purpose. So because we're starting to fill in those lines, it's going to make everything else darker too. So as you see, I'm just going back and forth over the top of it until I get to a value that I like. Right on the edge, sometimes you need to just go along with the curvature of the structure. So now you're going to do the same thing for all of them. However, um, you can stop here and do that. Or you could be one that likes to do cross hatching. So now I'm going to show you cross hatching. So like I said, you can either stop at this point and do that to the, all of them, only hatching, or you could add cross hatching. When you're doing cross hatching, make sure that you're using the same curvature of the archway. 
So as you notice, we already put one curvature on the inside space right here, which is helping us define where our lines are going to go because you already have those lines that are helping you guide where your other lines need to. So right here, I'm gonna look and start filling out those little spaces, making sure I'm following the guide. Going in the middle, I tend to find that it's easiest if you start breaking up sections because then you know um, the distance between the two spaces on how that curve is going to um, lie. So if you look at the curve on the left and you look at the curve on the right, split it in between and have an equal like, type of curve, it ends up helping you. Start filling this in a little bit more to make it a little bit darker. Making sure that you're still keeping those dark spaces. As you notice, I tend to go over the top of it horizontally again, making sure I'm cross hatching and then I hatch again until I get to the point where I like it. Now we have to work on this little section that's here. However, right here, there's a light source. We wanna make sure we're avoiding that space. So make sure your pen doesn't go into that area when you are shading. I'm just hatching along that top edge, made sure I avoided that highlight area. I'm going on the very top section that we just shaded and making a really dark line. So there's that backdrop that it needs to be able to stick out from that space. Now we have to do the facing frame. That facing area right there, as you see, I'm going from left to right, and then I'm going to fill in the space in between. Making sure to avoid any highlighted area that I need. Now those two spaces had just like joined together. We need to make sure that we can see a separation. If you notice right on the edge, it is a shadowed area that's slightly coming down to show a little bit more detail so that we can see that edge. Now I'm gonna start filling in the bottom. As you notice, I just fast forward just a little really quick because all I did is fill in left to right, horizontally, nothing exciting. But as you notice from the top, we're gonna to do a gradient coming from that space that we just shaded, coming down from that area as like a, a gradient throughout the entire piece. So going from dark to light as we come down. There's a darker line that's approximately right there, so make sure you get that in there. And then down here, I'm starting to fill in the, ba the base layer, to making sure I have that darker line that's there as well. There's a little bump out that's there that we need to define. To define anything, it's all about highlights and shadows, so you need to make sure you notice those. Now we have these weird little circle holes or whatever they are within that space. I didn't, I had them drawn in pencil, but now I can't see them. So I'm just kind of placing them approximately where I think that they should be. If you notice, there are a few that are above the others. Then right below those on the left hand side are some bigger chunkier ones. I'm going to make this area a little bit darker. Right on this edge, I had some um, little holes of white. So make sure you double check those little areas and kind of fill them in if needed. So big white gaps are going to be noticeable in your piece when you're done. This area right here is a lot lighter. So make sure that you're aware. But in this corner over here, it's a little bit lighter. I'm drawing in my little pencil line first because I had to didn't trace that initially. So now I had to trace it. Now I'm going to go in and shade the darkest area first. So I am aware of where it's located. Then I'm going to come in and shade my lighter zones. Going from the line that I um, started with and coming on over. So I like that value that's there. 
Now I need to make that darker area as well, a little bit darker, as well as making sure that this spot right here, right there, see, is a little bit darker. So be aware of where those darkest points are. So I'm blocking in my darkest points, and then I'm going to shade my darker plane. So this area right here is a lot darker than this area. So now you have to get in some bricks. So if you notice, you can actually see bricks pretty well in this spot because the light is hitting it. Um, so I am just pulling in a couple of those lines, making them a little bit um, darker so that you can see them. Popping in a couple of those verticals to represent the brick. Make sure you're observing the photograph so that you're actually seeing how big they are and where they're located. Now you're going to do that throughout all of these. I'm going to do all of the top ones first, so the top little areas, then the detail towards the bottom. However, as you go along, the detail is going to become less and less, so that bottom section you won't be able to notice. I'm going to fast forward through this, so I'm going to um, trace everything first for each of those sections that I'm doing. Then I'm going to shade the top archway, doing just a base layer, and then I'll do my gradient coming in. The gradient itself, um, if you notice I'm doing a large space, so I'm doing the left to right thing. The gradient itself is going from dark to light, similar to this guy up here. So it's darker on the left hand side. As you come over, it's going to be lighter. So I'm going to start filling in the left hand side with more pen. Doing the same thing for the next ones. As you move over, you're going to start noticing as less information is going to be there, it's also going to be slightly lighter. Now I need to do those bottom spaces. The bottom spaces aren't going to have as much detail, but please make sure you still are trying to show some of what you can see. I'm going to throw some of those brickworks in because I have the pencil lines there. If I go in with the shading, I'm not going to be able to see it. So I'm going to throw in my pen. And notice the bottom is a little bit lighter again because of where the water hits, the water line. So please make sure you're observant of your photograph. So as you notice, I'm leaving that bottom right hand side a little bit lighter. Now I'm going to continue on to the, to the right. When you're looking at me working on these areas, what I do want you to notice is the far left one had a lot of detail. Okay, these are not actually taking that long. It's only two times the speed. So the um, piece itself should get faster as you move to the right. Now we're going to start working on the archway similar to what we did on top and the little darker blobs that are coming down. So those shadows of those little um, boxes that are coming out. So I just put one there. So be observant of where those are. I'm just going to go along through all of them and put my little shadows and shade in my little boxes. Now I'm going to start working on the brickwork and the shadows that are along it, similar to what we did above. This, however, is a little bit closer to us and a little bit more defined. So some of your lines might be a little thicker. So as you are aware, you just noticed I made a pretty thick line at the bottom there. These are going out almost radial, so remember you need to make sure that they're at the angle that you see with inside the photograph. Now I'm going to start working on the bigger section of that pillar area. 
what I'm looking at first, and you can do this however you want, but what I'm looking at is those darkest areas with inside the image, and I'm kind of blocking those in to make sure that I have them in the right spot. However, my pencil marks are already there, so really you can just go from top down. I'm going to speed through this, and all I'm doing is starting to trace the um, lines that I currently have on there from my pencil, but I'm also making sure I'm observant of the photograph on how some of those lines are going to be thicker than others. They're not all the same because the brickwork is overlapping one another a little bit, which is dropping a cast shadow on the space. You're going to continue doing the same as you go along to the right. However, as you go away from the viewer, you're not going to be able to see as much. So make sure that you're aware of that. couple vertical points with inside of the, these sections. Now we have to do the, the archways on these because I did not do them yet. And so just remember it doesn't go all the way around with the pen. You're only going to do part of the pen and make sure that the brickwork is radial going out. So for your brickwork, it should be going to your vanishing point. I already have pencils down, but I'm showing you you can use your ruler if you'd like making sure that you're aligned with the pencil work that you already have created so that you know where your vanishing point if if you don't have it already lined up to so your vanishing point i had removed my vanishing point from my piece yours potentially is still there i'm just going to trace my pencil lines that i currently have on my drawing making sure it's a broken implied line now we have to shade this spot it's the same as the two above so you need to make sure it's horizontal lines and as you're going along you're going to shade it horizontally the entire time making sure that there's a white space gap above which is that front facing highlighted area just go through and double check that you have everything on your building structure that you think is good technically there could be more shading done but we're going to leave it at this then we can go in and we can work at the ground. So sometimes there is um, water in this area, but we're going to do the rocks. There is a tree hill space back here. So what I'm doing is I'm starting off with the darker points with inside the structure of the tree. Um, and I'm just kind of doing little baby scribbles to make that tree into a shape. So you could do little circles, you could just do whatever your hand kind of scribbles at. It's totally a free-for-all scribble, but it makes it look more realistic if it's not um, perfect lines, okay? Because your tree itself, if you imagine a whole bunch of little trees or a whole bunch of little itty-bitty little leaves that are all piled up. So you want to make sure that you're looking more at the values and the size of your marks. So the size of your marks are going to help determine how far away an object is versus close up. So if you notice my marks on this, I'm really, really tight because those trees are really far away. Right now I'm building in my medium value or lighter value. And so I have the darkest value and then I'm going in with a kind of a medium value so that it has some um, impact within the background to show that there is some dimension. If you have it all one solid flat, it's not going to be as interesting and you're going to lose some information back there. So I'm popping in a little bit darker spots to make sure I do have that impact and make sure I do have that dimension. The edge of my piece of paper, I have a couple little white spots so I was filling in. Now we have to work on the ground. So if you start in the back, you're not going to have as much information. It makes it a lot easier. So looking at that one archway that's furthest back, I'm just drawing some horizontal lines and where it's going. I didn't have that traced back there, so I'm finishing that off. So the horizontal lines that are coming out and a little bit scribbly little vertical lines that are here that are making a flatter space. What I'm looking at is shapes as I'm drawing the base, the ground area. So I'm looking at where are the darker shadows. I'm looking at how can I make this look like a little plant potentially, but little within little scribbles, remember. But as you notice, um, when I'm working on this, my little scribbles are going to become bigger holes. So you're going to be able to see a little bit more white in those spaces as you move closer to the viewer. So the things that are further back, less detailed. 
Okay, things that are closer to us are going to have more detail. So those details are going to be the size of your mark making as well. Here's this little water space. So like I said before, this is usually filled with water because it is a river. Um, however, this is the dry season. This photograph was taken. And so here I'm building up the rock structure that's on the side to help me figure out where my water is going to be placed. Now I'm going to draw perfectly horizontal lines the best I can freehand um, because water would be moving horizontally. It would not have an angle to it whatsoever. So try to get your horizontal lines in there, which you should be good at by now because you've drawn a lot of horizontal lines. The edge of this rock structure is going to have a darker space because it has that drop shadow that's there. drawing some rocks in and shading some random shapes. There's a lot of information going on in the bottom and I'm going to simplify it. I'm going to look for the bigger chunks and bigger structures and build those in. So here there's a plant in this area. So I'm going to kind of scribble a little plant in. And if you notice, I really am doing scribbles. Okay, little like U shapes or little ovals. Um, whatever my hand is kind of doing, I'm kind of just working, looking at the picture and making little marks. Starting to look at value as well. So if you notice, I started building up that little darker space that's down below. A couple little plant pops up a little bit higher so it's not a perfect uh, little oval shape. And there's one a little bit further back so they're a little tighter. And then some grass type structure. So kind of go through and find some areas that you feel like, hey, I can totally do this and add something. The thing that's really cool about art is that you don't have to have everything inside of it because someone is not going to sit there and look at a photograph when this is hanging up. You just have to make it look believable. But one of the best ways to make things look believable is by observing what you are drawing. But, like I said, it doesn't mean that you have to place everything in there. It just means that you need to place enough to make it seem like that physically could have happened. So here I'm drawing that plant, but if you remember when I was actually drawing it in the lesson about drawing perspective, is I said I'm just kind of drawing. I'm not perfectly observing what you guys could observe. Um, I was just trying to get it done quickly so that you guys can have this um, completed. Here are some pictures that are just a little bit more close up that you can pause if you'd like to work on those specific sections again or double check that you did it well enough. This is. Um, an area just for you to observe. Okay, It is not part of the lesson anymore because technically your drawing should be complete. You can sign the bottom right as well. Um, I thought that was in my video. It must have been cut out. So on the bottom right hand side I did have a signature in there. 